Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign, or really in the middle of a campaign, in which we are going to play as George Jellicoe's England in TNO, the victory of the National Democratic League, the first election in England after the war, and that first truly free one since 1935 would have obviously been a momentous one. After years of hardship and deprivation, the people of England would have had their say. And the world waited with bated breath, fearing the worst from a people vengeful and angry from the recent past. Would Sterling, the reactionary leader of the SS, or SAS, be the first English PM? Or would the red banner of a communist Labour Party fly in the halls of Parliament? Neither happened. Instead, the centre-right coalition of the National Democratic League won the hearts of the voters. Headed by the George Jellicoe, a former commando diplomat and the son of an old hero of Jutland, the party promised a return to the England of old, one of the free markets, and a strong economy ruled by the daughter of George VI. But alas... An England that would make the necessary social changes and economic reforms to keep up with the modern era, and the glowing endorsement of Claude Auchinleck was enough to seal the deal in many districts. Many are concerned that this coalition may not last. It is made up of many parties with different goals and volatile personalities, but the NDL will still press on. It will fulfill its mandate and give the voters what they asked for in England, ruled by sensibility and compromise, as well as a constitutional monarchy, or a constitutional monarch. And perhaps one day, a Britain that is respected by the nations of the world, let us go forward together, my friends. Together. And... Ah, there he is, Mr. George Jellicoe, the Admiral Sentix of the Ship of State. Beautiful. Ooh, the... Hmm. The Secret Intelligence Service. You lose a lot of political power dealing with Philby. Dealing with Philby. Ooh, do we don't do him fast enough. Do we get cooed? No, I don't think we can. No, I think it's the collaboration government you can. Oh, so you get uh, more political power back. Okay, that's interesting. And dealing with Philby. Oh, so you can crack down on the behavior and you get a lot more political power. Um, Socialist Labour Party's pol politics will support will increase, cutting down on guns. I won't probably go down that way, but let democracy ring first. The votes have been counted, and the people have made their made theirs clear. For their for the first time in almost three decades, a free and fair election has been held in England, and the people have chosen. They've chosen freedom. They have chosen democracy. They have chosen the National Democratic League. We shall unify the government and rebuild the nation. We shall improve our standing, both at home and abroad. We shall transform England and the British Isles into a bastion of democratic freedom. Such is the will of the people. Oh, the scale of democracy. Oh, what is this? Oh, okay, this is just like balancing stuff. We can either go very conservative or very democratic. The NDL is a balancing act. The right-wing English Patriots and the left-wing New Whig parties both command significant influence in the NDL. If one of these organizations gets more than 40% influence, the other will raise alarms. If this influence goes to 40%, a disaster and defection will occur. Jellicoe's goal is to keep the other wings balanced and his Democrats the strongest organization in the NDL. So, okay. Um, strength. Oh, I don't remember. Like, I think I heard somewhere, like, if you... If once I get too powerful, you get cooed or something bad happens? Ooh, you get more jobs. Send Steve us on a trip to America. We'll be more military loyalty. So we could probably do both of these, actually. That'd be kind of nice. That's 50-50. Shake things around. Um, strength of Democrats increase. Strength. Uh, nothing for social. Uh, nothing here. You know, let's try it. So let's do wigs. So 14-17 versus military loyalty, which I do want to increase anyway. So 16-16. Moderate power did go down. Oh, that sucks. Oh, so we want more Democrat stuff, too. So um, give a speech. There we go, so nothing really happened. Except we got more influence with uh, the military loyalty. So 55%. Eh, not bad. Could be worse. I'm meeting with St. John Stevis. Stevens? Stevis? Let's do that one. Norman St. John Stevis leads the liberal Democrat wing of the NDL. <clears throat> While he may have some socially unacceptable preferences, we cannot ignore his influence. He is one of the few people able to rally the inner city populations against the SLP. Not only will we need to entertain some of his some of his more liberal ideas regarding social issues, we we'll also need to balance him and Enoch Powell. Those two men and their respective factions would not play nicely with each other, and it will be up to us to keep the party unified. The one who never surrendered. Also, that's just that's it. Cool. I might not even touch this too much at all. Uh, the man, old man knew the audience was listening to his address. Uh, well, the old man knew the audience listening to his address was entranced. That was what he had hoped for. His mind had the occasional fears of the flight from Canada that, was, that he was not well respected here. That his beloved country had written him off a miserable failure, but upon landing, the mood was anything but. And he, and as he visited the House of Commons for what he knew was his last time, he knew that this would be his grandest triumph on the side of many great ones. <clears throat> He continued, We lay prostrate a year ago in too many countries, it seemed that our account was closed, and we were finished. All this tradition of ours, not arts, history, were gone and finished when liquidated. Very different is the mood of England today. England, other nations thought, has drawn a sponge across her slate, but instead our country stood in the gap. There's no flinching and no thought of giving in, and by what seemed almost a miracle to those outside these isles, though we ourselves never doubted it, we now find the invader with all his treachery and greed that lies subdued. For everyone, this is a lesson, never give in. His voice raised as he reached the crescendo of his speech. Never, never, never nothing. Great or small, large or petty, 
and never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. Never yield to force, never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. These past months have seen catastrophic events throughout the world, but these have been the greatest months our country have ever lived, and we must thank God that we have been allowed to play a part in making these days memorable in the history of our race. Closing announce, advance Britannia, long live the cause of freedom, God save the Queen. And the chamber explodes into rapturous applause. The old man's legacy is secured. I do want to keep some PP, a good amount of PP, just because you never know if we might need some more later on, which we'll need some to pass the axe. And this is the same save I used when I played as George Harold Wilson. So it looks like George Jellico, we get more naval XP and more decorated output. So he's got a bug, but if we really want to see him, there he is. Nice. Daily political power, that's nice. 39%, all right. Uh, the NDL triumphant. In the early hours of the morning, the exit polls began to tell the results of the first free English election in many years. The National Democratic League has secured a majority in the seats of Parliament and would inevitably be called to form the next government. Such a spectacle had not been seen for two decades, and change was more than welcome. Yet many could not help but fear for the longevity of the government which was so internally divided from the start. How could Earl Jellicoe have the hope of holding it all together? However, no matter what the people thought of the NDL, Jellicoe would graciously accept the prime ministership, and altogether a different government would rule over the English people who had suffered for so long. A new course, meeting with Powell. There are few figures that much controversial, more controversial in England than Enoch Powell. Despite his problematic views on religious freedoms and his complicated thoughts on immigration, he still has a significant amount of influence in the country. This influence is mainly amongst the far right as well as supporters of the fallen collaborationist government. While many in the League dislike him, he is a key component of the government and must be kept on our side if we are to enact our vision for England. He is critical to our plans, we must meet with him to sway him to our cause. Nice, keep getting more gun stuff. That'd be good. So yeah, that seems a little bugged. Again, huh? Ah. And we have 14 here. Oh, the sub probably came back. Yeah, I don't see the point. I think oh, it was like 40% of either side gets 40%. You get it's bad for you or something like that. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I like that one a lot though. More jobs seems really good for us. More and more jobs, please. The new full one minister. Jellico was glad to see St. John Stevens arrive in his prime ministerial office so promptly, for he did not wish to wait long to tell him the good news. Stevas was uh, to become the Prime Minister of Foreign Affairs, a position that Jellicoe knew that would suit the man very well. The leader of the Whig Party was indeed pleased with his new position, and he was aware that there was much work to be done in this field. Before he left, though, Stevas turned to Jellicoe and asked what position Enoch Powell would be getting. Minister of Security, I'm afraid, but best keep the man where he will be happiest for now. Keep your friends close. Hey, more political power, we lose foreign subversive activities efficiency, and trade deal opinion factor goes down, but uh, talk with Claude. Claude Auchinleck, the father of the National Democratic League, the leader of Her Majesty's most loyal resistance and the rebellion. There is no more prominent individual in England, or maybe even in the Isles. He is a man who chose Jellicoe to lead the NDL, and as such, it is only right and proper that we consult with him about the future of the country. We can fish, or fish out his insights and further secure his backing. After all, he put us here. How hard would it be for him to put someone else in our place? Very nice. The new security minister. The prime minister's meeting with Enoch Powell was a lot more uh, formal than he would have liked. The leader of the Patriot Party declined the drink Jellico offered him and instead insisted that he get on with whatever it was he was going to tell him. I've decided upon giving you the position of minister of national security. I'm sure you'll do a brilliant job of keeping our country well or <clears throat> secure. Indeed I will, came Powell's brief supply. He left the room soon after, not bothering to ask after the position of the leader of the Whigs. After all, he had just been given a job to do and he would be darned if he did not start his work immediately. And your other friends close as well. Hey, more resistance. He's a resistance hero. More recovery and stability. Nice. And I'm just going to do the loyalty and efficiency. It's going to go up anyway, so it goes up to 35%. This will drop down to 60%. So maybe we'll stop doing this one for a while and then boost it back up. Let's do more efficiency. And then, God save the Queen. The time has come now for jo Elizabeth Windsor to take the crown. The turn of the Queen should be a momentous, joyous occasion, but it is marred by a pallid cloud. A question still hangs thick over the coronation. What is to be done about the collaborator, the puppet? What is to be done about the traitor king? What is to be done about Edward VIII? Hey, George Wallace! There are many in the country, and the party, with differing views and opinions on this matter. Only once this question has been answered, can she be crowned Qu Elizabeth II, Queen of England, and eventually the British Isles. Oh... And let's do weak focus. I think I might just do the stuff over here. But a meeting with Auchinleck. George Jellicoe met up with Claude Auchinleck. At the end of the busiest day of his life, Auchinleck had been expecting him. A chair had been poured beside a table, and a glass of something had already been placed next to it. Jellicoe did not mind what he had been poured, so as long as it was strong. So how long do you think it can all last? Auchinleck asked Prime Minister rather bluntly. If I'm to be honest, Claude, sometime between the end of today and the next election, I fear such things are out of our control. The way I see it, George, we are the last hope this country has. Wilson may personally be committed to democracy, but God knows what the rest of the SLP will do. Besides, we both know he somehow has less of a grip on his party than you have on the, N on the NDL. You simply must maintain the NDL, George, for the future of all England depends on it. 
Joe going to Akhenak was right. Yet he cannot shift the ever-present fear that he cannot make it. That he would not be enough. How about another drink? Man, that feels like me whenever I'm in a job. Sometimes. If I, if I ever have a job. Ooh. I want to do the rebuilding of the economy as fast as possible. But you know, I do that always. And it's probably better to do. I'm going to do this one. The Secret Intelligence Service. No contradiction greater than Kim Philby can be found. Philby is a firm believer in the absolute annihilation of the enemies of the working class. He also leads the Secret Intelligence Service better than anyone else could. To remove him would be near impossible and would be a major blow to the young service. We must treat this affair delicately, like capturing a butterfly. We can either tighten our grip, not too hard, or nor slacken up a bit too much. And we're still building some cities here, which is joyous, joyous, joyous. Um, we have 1.9 GDP growth, which is not great. And deficit is still a little bit too large for my liking, but the royal issue for a brief moment. Jellico thought that the radicals did have a point when they suggested shooting Edward. From an impartial point of view, it was simpler. Jellico sighed and came back to reality. Edward would live. Real really, all major decisions were made by Berlin, who kept Edward as a figurehead. And any other minor decisions were made by the people under him who hated his guts. And there was a bit of hesitation within the NDL to excuse or execute a close family member of the Queen. Anyway, so that sad sad would keep his head, but there's still the question of what to do with him. Exile him? That was an option. Put him as far away from the island as possible, but some said it was too much. He could be allowed to stay if his titles were stripped from him. Without his titles, he would be nothing, but he would also be nothing if he was... Uh, if he was permanently kicked out of the kingdom. But what was the difference? Both put him out of the picture just as well as the other. But still, there was a massive debate about it. Exile something out of the 1700s. Stripping his tiles was too lenient. He could be doing something sneaky if he was pulling or put outside English jurisdiction. He might do something sneaky if he had access to London. He might just be happy to be out of the picture anyway and not make a move. Gosh darn it, it was tired. He was tired of this. He was a prime minister and he'd solve the issue once and for all. And Edward would be removed from his jurisdiction. Would be now known as Mr. Winslow. Hmm. Mr. Windsor, ah, uh, I'm mean, gonna play it as uh, Harold Wilson. I got rid of the monarchy, so probably m removed of his jurisdiction. Yeah, it could be a good figurehead. So the moment triumph. Whoever came up with the idea to televise this deserted knighthood, Jellicoe thought. Jader Krupp was prepared to fly the tape as soon as it was broadcast in Canada and Australia. TV sets were flying off the shelves, and everyone not in the crowd outside was gathered around a TV set for the duration of the ceremony. Everyone could see the coronation, and everyone could be part of it. Not to say this had damp and attendance long along the procession route. Everyone wanted to see the new queen in person, riding with her husband in a gilded carriage, and with her newly incorporated royal guards in front of and behind her. And the reception was mostly positive. The SLP had elements who were going to protest the ceremony, but they had been drowned out by the cheers of the onlookers and the martial music. No disruptions on route happened, which was Jellicoe's main concern. The ceremony began with God... With God? No. Well, maybe with God and the queen entering Westminster Abbey to acquire singing, I was glad... Once she had seated herself on the chair of the estate, the religious paraphernalia and the coronation garments were brought in. Then came the first necessary step. The queen stood next to King Edward's chair. Sir, said the Archbishop of Canterbury, I here present unto you, Queen Elizabeth, your undoubted queen. Wherefore are you going? who are going, coming this day to do your homage and service? Are you willing to do the same? My bad for pronunciations. God save the Queen Elizabeth, affirmed the crowd. Throughout the rest of the ceremony, filled with oaths and traditions, he was never bored or found himself wishing for a quick end. For everything that Himmler had worked for, everything that was so many men had died to do, and every sacrifice made by the people of England, it was for this. The true heir had returned, and the world knew that pre-war England had returned, and when St. Edward's cross touched Elizabeth II's head, a new reign and a new era for her kingdom had officially begun. Long live the Queen. Dealing with Philby, to careful internal surveillance and intel gathering from MI6 or most loyal elements. We've reached an impasse on a possible strategy on, near, on a nearly every option is a double-edged sword. Removing him to assure loyal leadership, yet inevitably get a weaker leader facing a leftist revolt. Defang him by removing his guns and support, worsening efficiency and still provoking his ire, or simply keeping an eye on him, allowing him to run the service as efficiently as possible, yet perhaps not allowing us to halt his influence until it's too late. We need to make a decision on how we will handle this matter. The trouble with Philby. Working tirelessly behind the scenes at even the most shadowy aspects of England's inner workings, Kim Philby has wormed his way into every corner of British politics. This man is a natural-born spy and an enigma of in and of himself. No one can be sure of his true intentions. The predicament came, although that we face, is the support he receives from anyone and everyone, anyone and everyone, who matters. Across both sides of the commons and beyond, Jellicoe himself has his own doubts as to whether or not the man could really be as bad as some claim. Nevertheless, Philby is an indomitable figure and his control over the secret intelligence service only adds to the damage he could do to England. His true motives are yet to be uncovered. Once the truth is out, we can deal with them for good. What can be done? Well, you know what can be done? We can raise our efficiency level, right? Yes. Raise it up, efficiency. So now it's at 40%. A visit in prison. 
The cell's door opened loudly, startling the figure hunched over the small desk. He put down the pen he was holding and looked at the visitors. It wasn't time for his meal. When he saw who it was, he strained his posture but refused to stand to greet her. Niece came his tired voice. I would have never expected you to come visit me. Uncle, the young woman answered in a firm tone, without an ounce of sweetness for a kin, I came to make sure that you were being treated right. I am indeed well treated, considering the circumstances, was a tired answer. It has been so sad, so empty. The woman remembered his jovial uncle when he played with her, always laughing, always ready to have fun. Now, though? <clears throat> now he was an empty shell, wrinkles bringing his once regal features down like rubs tearing down the statue of a tyrant. Despite her efforts, she voiced her innermost thoughts. Why did you do all this? Was your thirst for power so great you turned into that monster's lapdog? Hunger for power, the laugh, so full of scorn, so different from the old ones, almost scared her. Elizabeth, in all of my life, I never held an ounce of power. They took away my crown, my freedom, they... His voice cracked. They wanted to take away my hoth, but I didn't let them take that. <clears throat> And look where this brought you. You betrayed the kingdom. You betrayed my father. You, she stopped when he saw her uncle's eyes turn hollow. You don't know what I suffered, Elizabeth. I took it all to save my people. I didn't betray them if it hadn't been for me. Lennon would be rubble one by now. The queen scoffed. I see you are well, uncle. I take my leave now. And she made to turn. Be careful, Elizabeth. The Americans are not different from the Germans. They'll do the same with a friendly smile. Be careful, came Edward's last plea. Elizabeth walked away, but she couldn't help but the nagging feeling that her uncle may, after all, be right. <clears throat> We're going to have to wait to see. The legacy of ink and paper. Hmm. If you wonder about this, please go ahead. I think I've read this twice already, so this is just about the Polish girl finding books and getting them for free, basically. So, on Distant Horizon, the White Eagle flies once more. Nice. Uh, the MI6 is for the Queen. We've chosen to crack down on behavior. Cutting on the guns. To pacify Philby. I don't know. I want more political power. Stability. Uh, authoritarian socialism. I don't want any more SLP, though. I'm going to do this one. Cutting down on the guns. The SIS has a formidable weapon stockpile built under Philby's orders, but tolerated for its role in the global armaments network, and the operations we still need to carry out on their own, uh, on our own soil. However, it is clear that the more militarized our service is, the more dangerous Philby's leadership is. By slashing down the arsenal, there will be a much less of a danger than that we suddenly find ourselves dealing with. Rebellious red militias, both at home and abroad. This one may hurt effectiveness in the short term, but if one wants to shoot at enemies, they really should be joining the army. Nice. A few days left for this. Cool. Also, just to let you know, I've not done this route at all off screen. I have no idea what's going to happen. So, even though I've played the other three English shots at the time of this recording, so it is what it is. Um, I, I, you know, whenever I see this, like I said, this one when I played as Harold Wilson. I wish there was so, more stuff for like, yeah, that's the only thing here that's really for like domestic policy. So, and like I said, I'm going to try to keep as much PP for now, generally. So, we'll see. Damn with Philby. Cutting the guns. And? Well, how to do with Philby? The evidence was placed before a hesitant Jellico. He had known Philby to be a brilliant member of the Secret Intelligence Service, but a double agent. He simply could not believe it. He'd done too much to help this government to be working against them all along. Is this really all necessary? Questioned Jellico. Quiet, Prime Minister. Now please make a decision, sir. The man needs to be dealt with. The possible options to Jellico were clear, yet he hesitated. He could listen to those around him and kick Philby out of the service for good, thus removing any possible threat. However, this would cause national uproar, as a mole surviving this long in the SIS would be scandalous. Oh, yet, the alternative was not much better. Instead of having Philby removed, the government could try to pacify him. All future investigations into his influence would be halted, with immediate effect. There would be none of the public downsides of ousting him, but he would remain an issue, leaving the possibility of communist takeover disturbingly high. The Prime Minister had to make a decision. Something had to be done. This man would have to be managed with great care for the good of the country. Bite the bullet, throw him out. We can appease him. Pacify him. Hmm. Crack down on his behavior. Cutting the guns. Choice of pacify him instead. We can appease him. Throw him out. Oh, that's the wrong one. Whoops. I'll be right back. My apologies about that, but let's go ahead and maybe building a nation? That wouldn't be too bad, right? Of course, we have all the stuff of the new armed forces as well. The old alliance. Um, what else do we have down around here? Let's see. Country rate issue. Counties Act. Reopening. Education reform. Seems like there's a lot of things we can do here in England rebuilt. It's kind of cool. Uh, let's do it. Rebuilding an economy. That's probably the best thing to do first. Homelessness, hunger, and sickness. Such are the conditions left to the hundreds of thousands of patriotic Englishmen after the violence of our civil war. Even the traditionally comfortable classes like business owners and landowners have seen their wealth dry up, leaving a gaping hole where an economy once existed. If we hope to stand on two feet, we must mobilize all resources possible to bring stability and comfort in the daily lives of all citizens rich and poor. Which we're going to lose more. We're losing a lot of political power here, which I don't like. How much do we get every single day? Not even one. Not even 0.7. You get 0.61. That's so not 
bueno. But now it's one. Yay! 100 Westminster Bridge Road. Harry Pollitt was one of the bravest men that England never has ever known, continued Kim Philby. To the crowd and press photographers who had gathered. When they asked for a name of his office, I could think of no better person to honor him. The sacrifice in the London Uprising has paved the way for the liberation of England, and a brighter tomorrow was possible because of it. The structure would originally be helped helping the collaborationists maintain their police state, but today it will house important work. Work that must be done to keep us safe and to ensure the rights of people everywhere are not trampled by the oppressors. And if Harry was here today, I am certain he would be beaming with pride at what we have done and how he's remembered. Thank you. There was an applause as Philby stepped to the Red Ribbon in front of a group of notables here for a dedicated dedication ceremony. The mayor in London was not among them. Eating cookies on the freshman table, he had not expected Philby to be so brief, and he hurriedly ran back on stage. Uh, smiling to the audience, ladies and gentlemen, he said, as an aide handed him and Philby sets of scissors, I now declare the Pullet Building the new home of MS6 Open. Philby and the mayor cut the ribbon as uh, camera flashes lit them up. While Philby was outwardly smiling, he was an ing inwardly angry that the mayor had broken the number one rule about the structure. This was officially a nondescript office structure for some unnamed building, an agency, nothing more, even if everyone knows differently. Um, if you want to read this one, please go ahead. I know the last one I just read, I've read that one before as well, but I, it is what it is. Whatever. Um, if you want to read this one, please go ahead too. Always second fiddle of the bloody Yanks. Nice. Actually, you know what? We can do this one more time to you. Uh, actually, where are we at? 62%. Let it go down a little bit. Well, actually, it gets by one. The base is 65, so that's fine. That's all I care about the base. All I care about the base. The poor. Let's do the poor next, because they, they could use some help. Uh, London's rule, or ruins are a sorry sight. Emaciated children, ha haggard families, rampant crime, and this is the center of our wealth. Imagine the situation in the rural villages. We cannot move forward with so many people, so many children, in dire economic straits. And so now, the most immediate goal is to provide the necessities to all those left in destitution. Three meals a day, clean water, and heated homes, and basic health care. These are the promises to all those crushed by the violence of the Civil War. An afternoon stroll. After a morning of unproductive meetings, one could use a nice stroll uh, to clear the mind. So thought Prime Minister Jellico as he walked out of Westminster Palace. George Jellicoe's stroll will not be stay pleasant for much uh, longer as he rounded the corner, hoping to pick up a pastry from a favorite bakery instead. He ran into a grumbling storefront, a faded sign hanging sand on the dirty glass. Wall Street was in a sorry state for every open business, there were two more clothes or on their way out. The homeless died of the streets, surrounded by an empty houses. Suddenly, a single gunshot loudly broke Jellicoe's focus on the street. As a security detail dragged him away, a woman shrieked as he, she entered her husband's house, a room, finding him with a smoking pistol in one hand and a brown envelope in the other. The Prime Minister returned to the Downing Street, shaking but filled with new resolve. As Jellicoe sat down, I... Eccles, and several other officials presented him with a report on the state of the economy. The numbers were as expected not looking great. He paid them little attention. It wasn't anything he hadn't already seen. The Prime Minister picked up the phone. Get Shirley on the line. Oh, that's going to cost us way a bit more, more housing. Uh, okay, you know, we could probably do that first. Uh, focusing on the OFN, that's not bad. Trade agreement with Italy. Deal with bosses, that's not bad. I like the GDP growth, too. Ooh. As much as I want to do that one, I don't want to hit the cost too much more. You get more poverty increase, though. Hmm. I want to get that one first. The jobless. As the English Civil War is drawn to a close, we are now free to focus on economic recovery as well as our political situation. So far, the data, data is dire. We must begin to reconnect with those who have been turned out by the war, and those who have lost their jobs amidst the ravages of the conflict. After we have assessed the status of our economy from, em from an employment perspective, we can begin to propose programs and special government actions. This might involve some wrangling of party factions, but surely we can come all together to rebuild a country and get England working once again. That'd probably be a good thing. We've got two days left for this one. Uh, we get more political power, actually, finally. I guess the NDL's liberal democracy? Yeah, I guess so. Cool. Ah, better weapons, nice. And keep going that way. Good. Deal with bosses, yes. While we do not intend to give our country over to the interests of large capitalist institutions, the, their help is necessary in revitalizing, revitalizing our economy and ensuring that we can recover from the war. We can hand out vital projects with ample government funding for national recovery that will give big business on our side and the people happy working and the nation ready for the future. We will, of course, remain careful to avoid a descent into corporate cronyism, and there will be oversight of these projects to make sure that they are fulfilling our expectations. And this one gives you... Oh, that's not bad. More jobs. We're creating more jobs in the North would be very good. What to do with foreign jobs versus home jobs? We have to make a choice, good or bad. So, right now we're still being one to some, and hey, slightly, a slight amount of a deficit. Not bad. Uh, I do want to get some more loyalty though. Uh, keep doing that one for now, just so that we don't have any penalties there. Deal with bosses. <clears throat> Followed up with creating more jobs in the North. 
even before the Civil War. The northern parts of England struggled due to cuts in government funding and projects. No government member was wanted to associate such a rebellious region, and so employment and growth lagged behind the South. Heavy fighting did not improve the situation, and now infrastructure and housing are a significant problem. Now that the Civil War is over we face, and we face less pressure from Germany, we can begin to push more funding towards these left-behind areas and to help them to, once more, again, become the industrial hot of England. Who's winning? Oh, who won the German Civil War? Oh, boy. Oh, it's Speer! He won? Okay, I didn't even realize that. I didn't... Okay, no wonder this thing popped up. Okay, that's my fault. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, we'll see how well he does. I can't... I think the last time was a boring one or was a goring one. I think goring one, maybe? I can't remember. I literally can't remember. Cheaper housing. Um, you know what? I don't want to hit our GDP too hard, but we're going to do it. Improve social programs first. <clears throat> Or next. The legacy of the fascist collaborators is one of us scraps to the poor. With the current state of our economy, we must immediately rectify this callousness. We will find the money, whatever the means, nationalize, tax, expropriate, if absolutely necessary, all for the uplifting of the poor. We cannot tread too hard on the individuals with some sums of wealth, but we can cut them down just a peg to feed the hungry and house the homeless. Yeah, we'll do that. And I hate having a deficit, but I want to get as much poverty improvement as possible right now, so. It's looking pretty bad. It's looking pretty darn bad. And poverty does get better, so. And more stability, too, which is not too bad. Trinket unemployment subsidies, very nice. A caramel colored wave. In a massive new facility in Sidcup, South London, the first bottles are loaded onto trucks to go all across London and southern England. They are loaded on the shelves, and as soon as the doors open, they're gone, and the trucks go back to bring out more uh, to a thirsty and eager population. Coca Cola would not have been available legitimately in England during the Second World War. Some bottles have been smuggled in through Scotland or Wales, but. <clears throat> It was never available on the wider market. But with the end of the trade embargo between the U.S. and England, Coke is back, and with it, its massive investment by Atlanta-based company. Coke is, a, Coke is undoubtedly pleased with a strong reception in London and has its plans to open up bottling facilities in Leeds, Nottingham, and Petersborough to cater to English demand. The carbonated beverage will soon be available in all corners of England, along with a new concoction of the company's pushing called Sprite, teaching England to sing. Nice. There you go. 75% which is good. Um, loyalty is actually very good as well, which I like. It gives you more government stability, which is very, very good. Thank you. Cheaper housing. Let's do that one. Uh, oh, 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 boy, this one to do first. Nice. Oh, why do I keep doing that stuff? We got to do stuff over here, too. Thank you very much. Our max factories in the state. Um, yeah, cheaper housing. As we picked up our social programs, there have been some blowback from the private sector. Nowhere has it been more acute than the well-organized associations of landlords across England. They protest loudly about the communist proposal to create public housing. More productively, they have worked with some of our social democratic and liberal colleagues to draft up a plan for cheaper housing via public-private partnerships. We can encourage these landlords to build thousands of new housing units with certain regulations imposed, keeping public housing to a marginal level. And followed up with the Housing Act, we're going to begin with this one. A new housing act, built in consultation with all parties afflicted from a landlords to homeless, is a major step towards making housing affordable to everyone. By using some of our funds to subsidize housing development, setting caps on rent, and requiring certain standards to be met for all new projects, we will move much closer to giving everyone a roof over their heads. Perhaps one day everyone can have not just a place to lay their head, but a place they can proudly call home. And look at that deficit. Oh, baby boy. Oh, man, that's not, that does not feel good. But since we have the PP now, oh, the aftermath. Look at more political power, too. Patriotism. Cool. The Housing Act. Nice. And what to do with foreign jobs. We still have an enormous trade dependence on the U.S. and the rest of the OFM, and some of our members have grown uncomfortable with the number of jobs being shipped overseas to these nations. Furthermore, there are many Americans here in England that say they are taking away jobs from hard-working English Englishmen and women. The more liberal elements of our party member maintain that such trade is necessary and that economic ties with Americans further our national security interests. We must find a way to defuse tensions on both sides regarding this ec vital economic issue before the complaints boil over. More capitalism, please. More, more capitalism. When in doubt, you want to get more capitalistic, right? Takagi, hello, Takagi, hello there. 1.43. Boost, baby, boost. Ah, nothing like Afghanistan. Oh, no, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India killing each other, right? Was it? No, it's pa it Afghanistan, right? Yeah, Afghanistan, Pakistan. Cool. Kill each other off, guys. Kill each other off. Do the best you can. Oh, crap. Oh, God. Lord. God, there's so many here. So we need... 17. 17 more. That's not bad. That is not bad. Um, moderate wing. We're probably going to spend 100 people here anyways. I don't want to do this one. Uh, the conservative wing, the liberal wing, and the moderate wing. I want more Democrats here. But if we do two, conservatives and these guys, you might get a few more here. Ooh, uh, let's do moderate wing. We need five. Five. There's more you can get out of the conservative side. Yeah. Oh, we got him. Cool. 
256, or 258 out of 250 some. And where are we at? Oh, that's not bad. 16, 13, 71. That's not too bad. I'm okay with that. The trade. Our dependence on trade with the U.S. has begun in both a historical weakness and a vital artery. During the Second World War, our failure to defend this trade cost us dearly during the English Civil War. It was one of the few avenues we had to require food and manufacture goods from abroad. Now that the Germans no longer have control over who we can and cannot trade with, we must reopen this vital trade partnership. Surely the Americans will be amendable to such a uh, proposal? Let's hope so. They like making money, so. One, two, three, some? Awesome. One point... Three one. That's much better, actually. That's a lot better than it was earlier. I might cut down on the divisions, but of course, after we're done with uh, uh, Wales, the Welsh. Oh. The question of foreign versus home jobs. I don't suppose this is going to be too difficult to do when we have to go to war with them. Eventually, but it is 1965, almost 66. The question of foreign jobs. Uh, recently, the Parliament has been embroiled in a debate on whether the new government should prioritize the growth of foreign or domestic jobs. Opinions on what direction has taken or to take has split the NDO down factional lines like normal. Surprisingly, both Minister Williams and MP Powell both agree on prioritizing domestic job growth, and the respective factions are likely to follow along with them. Both acknowledge that the effects of this would not be seen for some time, however. Both argue this would ensure England's economic independence and strengthen her in the long run. Foreign Minister Stavos argues that the short term growth found by by bringing in foreign jobs is essential to England's economic recovery, even if much of that growth will be tied to foreign interests. Although both left and right factions accuse Stevens of selling out to the OFM and have rallied together to oppose this notion, they've only co have enough combined votes to solve a vote. Deputy Minister Eccles and a small pro status. So Pro status quo faction are currently undecided, and could be the deciding vote. As is usual, it falls to you, Errol, to unite the party. Perhaps some words to Parliament could sway one the winds one way or another. For the good of England, we must open ourselves to new opportunities. Versus, England should always place her needs, own needs, over the profits of others. Ooh, more growth. I like the growth. The growth is important. Sell people out here. Um, does this affect conservative liberal? I wanted the growth. I wanted the growth. I thought that would be go, go towards more liberal side. Okay, that's weird. Whatever. Focusing on OFN. Hmm. Well, both these don't seem to do too much to us. Uh, political power. Wow, you get more happiness with the people. Wow, big deal. Rebuilding a nation. The civil wars left England scar scared or scarred physically, economically, and culturally. As sobbing falters, as sobbing fathers, mothers, daughters, and sons bury their loved ones, the nation must begin the process of rebuilding itself from the ground up. Cities must be rebuilt, roads must be repaved, and the people's wounds must, of course, be healed. While the worst may have been passed, a long, costly process of reconstruction lies ahead, which... Uh, the new government must pursue immediately to secure the new status quo. It may take months or even years to rebuild, but with a classic English spirit, it can be done. England has been bowed and bloody, but she remains absolutely unbroken. At least for now. Yeah, at least for now. You never know if we might need that. Afghanistan just sphere. Placeholder. Who cares? Does that happen? How often does that happen? China's out because they're probably dealing with Yunnan right now, but holy crap. Who cares about Afghanistan? Probably a few Afghanistani people probably do, but whatever. I really want to see what AI Albert Speer is going to do. If he could do Gang of Four AI, I'd be extremely impressed, but... Um, oh, there we go. Nice. Keep spending, boys. Um, expansion in free Europe. While Spain and France may not be the most democratic nations, they are somewhat free from the grip of the German Reich. Alongside these nations, we can expand trade into Scandinavia and, of course, the Balkans. We can improve our economy and increase our influence in Europe at the same time. Uh, are shut. So that's it then, said Stevis. I'll be delivering our application to the president two days from now and the rest of the OFN. Uh, after that, if you want to be the act passive, please go right ahead. That's the plan, Jellico said. We have the necessary requirements, strategically placed, free and democratic, and able to carry our own weight. Isn't that what the OFN wants? We offer them a lot, and they should be happy to have us. But there's this die, and what if they don't? It would be ridiculous, but... That could still happen. Of course, it's bloody ridiculous, agreed Powell, a rare response for Stevus. We're Britain, aren't we? Well, how can they play the part of allies without us? It just doesn't make any sense. They need us just as an ego boost, if nothing else. Correct, said Jellico. They can work with us and have access to the North Sea and missile 15 minutes away from Germania. Or they won't and have to operate everything from Iceland. It's as simple as that. We'll be fine. The Americans aren't idiots, and English history's written. Nice. Nice. More jobs, baby. More jobs. What do you want in life? I want a jab. I want a jab. Um, mildly? Sure. Sure, guys. Sure. Oh! And Ireland. Actually, can we help out Irish hero? Darn, we can't send volunteers to kill more Irish. Darn it. <laughs> Sorry, feeling very English right now. Hey, 
Enter a new phase. That'd be probably really good to get to. So, trade agreements with Italia. Italy's government is vastly different to ours, but that isn't something that isn't really important right now. Regardless of ideology, Italy hasn't had good relations with Germany for almost 20 years now, making them a bulwark against German expansion. If we sign some trade agreements with the Italian government, we might just be able to sway them closer to our side. And where are we on the GDP? 1.2? That's better than it was earlier. That's definitely better. And how is poverty? Ooh, it's going up. Poor? Four? Poor four. Yeah, poor four. Oh, wait. Uh, focusing on the OFN, of course. The OFN is our greatest ally. Just as they help us militarily, we can help them economically. We shall expand our trade operations in the OFN member nations, especially the United States. And in doing so, we shall improve our own economy. Yeah, more growth. I mean, that stuff is okay. I didn't do that one first because it doesn't have a lot of benefits for us, realistically. So, um, Are you guys done training? Or Yeah, no, you're not. Could use some more arm XP. I mean, guys are only 10 to come with large, which sucks, but whatever. I'll go offensive. And do infantry expert too. That'd be nice. Other than that, don't really care. Uh, sure, that's fine. Actually, because I did edit, you guys have that stuff, so. Because now you guys are that one. We're lacking a lot of stuff here. Because these guys are 20 combo with, so. Which happens, you know. Treaty agreements with Italy. Very good, very good. Anything else here? Oh, we could. Let's save our PP for now, though. Into a new phase. Now that all of our immediate economic issues have been dealt with, we can move on to special social matters. The social issues of the country must be addressed from taxation to education. We owe the English people, whether they voted for us or not, for a better future. Of course, for a better England. We're doing this for you, England. We're doing this for you. Cool. And then we'll probably do the League Meets, maybe? Uniting the Party? That'd probably be good. Oh, yeah. Well, we gosh, I might save that one for later. We might do the old alliance anyways. Ties with Canada. I don't know. They said we will return. Uh, maybe I'll we'll start, start, focus on that side. Let's focus on uh, reorganizing the counties. In order to secure the power, the German collaboration as government interfered with and redrew the borders of many of England's counties. This has left many of them in a messy, broken-down state with an extraordinary amount of bribery and corruption. If England is to be brought back onto its feet, the old English county borders should be brought back and tweaked slightly, slightly, and the counties themselves should be completely reorganized with new governments. This county reorganization project should greatly reduce the bureaucratic slog of your local government, as well as reduce the massive amounts of corrupt officials. An evening drive, Jellico put down the economic report. He grabbed he rubbed his eyes and started to head out for the night. He had been working overtime for the past several weeks, arguing with his advisors and parliament to pass emergency bills to stabilize the economy. Projections show that the perif perilous freefall they have been ha in has been at least for now stabilized. He saluted the guard as he drove away. Jellico drove down the street and smelled in the calm evening air the smesh of smell of freshly baked bread. He saw happily moving a happy family moving boxes from a car. Although there was still much to do for the economy, Jellico couldn't help but feel some satisfaction. But the job wasn't done far from it. Stivas had riled up the liberal wing to shift the country's focus to social reforms, notably decriminalizing the homosexuality. Already, the Patriots have come out strongly in opposition, and although Powell seems reluctant to follow along with the more hateful rhetoric coming from his faction, however, if his party didn't act decisively, the Socialists would just definitely use this to gain more support. Yes, the next weeks and months of Jellicoe's prime ministership would be spent trying to wrangle his party to act one way or another, to address the social issues of England. But that was tomorrow's problem. Jellicoe felt he deserved at least one good night's sleep. The soul of England is at stake, a chance for a building, though. The destruction wrought by the Civil War upon England, while tragic and deeply regrettable, has presented the government with the opportunity to modernize the nation's infrastructure. All across the country, from Dover to Liverpool, millions of miles of roads, pipes, rails, and telephone lines have been shattered into pieces. Now new electrical and uh, telephone lines will be laid down, and modern pipelines will replace those from the Victorian period after this massive public works project. England will have the high-tech infrastructure it needs to carry on into the future. Very good. Spend cut. Spend cut. Spend cut. What do we do here? We spend and we cut. And we're looking very good. These guys are very loyal, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Government stability is looking very good. I'm really disappointed that this guy's not here. Look at Her, Her Majesty Elizabeth II. Their Majesty? Well, I think... Born Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Winslow. Minor princess for the rest of her life. Well, hopefully not. 42% government stability is not bad. The county rate issue. The county taxation system has been destroyed by the war. We must rebuild it. This gives us the ability to set taxes to a level that could grant us extra funds at the cost of our support. But if we lower taxes, our constituents would certainly be happy. But if we also just keep it at the same rate, if we're fine with the situation uh, we could have at the moment. Medium high taxes? Oh, I like more money, but I don't want to lose. That's 20% less political power. That's absolutely unacceptable. Things are fine where they are right now. Not bad. Or we go low taxation. We get 20% more political power for the future. 
We lose money, though. We lose... Uh, we get more job growth. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Versus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11. Or maybe I miscounted. I like that political power. You get more construction, more stability, more fat output. I don't want to lose any more money, though. 20% is a big chunk of change, though. 1.6. You know what? It, it's safer to do it like this. We need support cut taxes. It's safer to do it like that. 2.4 billion. That's pretty bad. Uh, we might not actually ever get a deficit again. But now we're at one, one and a half. From one point something to... It was like 1.0 something to 1.5. That's actually okay with me. I just want to be safe for whatever happens. Especially if we actually do end up getting like... Uh, a peaceful re reunion with Scotland. It's, oh, you always got to remember that one. Oh, I haven't even done land auction yet. Okay, well... Military construction? What's the wrong one? Military construction after that one. We will do what? Tank stuff, yes. Even though we literally don't have tanks yet. But whatever, don't question me there. Uh, the Countless Counties Act. With a piece, new piece of legislation called the Counties Act, we can further reorganize the counties. The Act will do three things. First, any changes to the borders of English counties after 1944 are reversed. Second, the government may not redraw county borders without the permission of the counties in, or communities in question. Third, auditing and financial transparency will be greatly increased on the local governments and their employees. This Act will cap off the ideas and small reforms regarding county reorganization that the government has made over the past few months. Very cool. So now we're swimming in a lot more pee-pee, which is good. Which, actually, swimming in pee-pee does not sound very good, actually, at all. But, whatever. Uh, lords and titles. On lords and titles. The collaborationist government under the royal party appointed hundreds of pe life peers or lords who had served their goals by approving the authoritarian agenda of the fascist House of Commons. These lords, while nominally meant to be apolitical, are clearly still working together to further the goals of the now-defunct royal party, while they remain in control of the House of Lords. They will continually over-scrutinize and amend legislation that England needs to preserve itself. Though it may prove controversial, we could revoke the titles of those lords appointed by the collaborationist government, removing more of the rot that the old regime did leave behind. And we're still building up more cities, and we have more space, it looks like, too. So we're at four and then some, which is really nice. Four and then some. So this will cut down hopefully a little bit faster, maybe. Because we've got more, slightly more stability, even though we're already 100%, so we'll see what happens. Um, we'll throw stuff, and once we start making infrastructure, I'll throw this, the other cities in there, too. So that'll be fine. Counties Act on loads and titles. So now we are at 243. That's actually a really good moderate wing. Um, can we get at least nine? Oh, just using the moderate stuff. Just going moderate is pretty good. 73%, 15, 12, not bad. Pretty good. Actually, we can just probably close out of this one to close out of this one, and then we can open that one in. So 259 under 252, awesome. And then the Lord's Act. Well, uh, we probably want to wait. What there is to save, Hungary says with Germany. For 15 years, the collaborationist government twisted the English education system into something vile and unrecognizable. So many young Englishmen and women grew up behind being taught and believing in discussing authoritarian ideals. Now the royal party gone and the rod exposed, many question whether the current system is at all salvageable. While the more patriotic lawmakers believe the current system uh, and school administrations can be kept largely intact, it must be still decided what may go and what, what may stay and what must go, of course. Cool. 70 days left, not bad. How are we doing here? 1, 2, 3. Ah, up to 6. Very good. And 2.29. Not bad. I might actually... I will cut down the military later on, but... Obviously, we still need to uh, uh, improve ourselves here, because we're missing a lot of anti-tank, artillery, guns, the normal stuff, but reopening. And they came, the lo Lord's spiritual representatives of the Anglican Church, the Lord's temporal hereditary peers who declared themselves for a party in the House of Commons, and the Lord's uh, uh, appeal and ordinary who exercised the legal functions of the chamber. The ceremony was steeped in traditions, with every moment accounted for, and every moment had, been, had reason behind it. The House of Lords was finally reopening, a house untouched by war, and with all the titles and privileges... Uh, it uh, granted to it, of course. Ooh. We're so, slowly going back to normal. Ooh, we lose political power. Ooh, 1.38. Ooh, we are 1.5. Actually, I'm glad we cut down spending then. Ooh. Well, obviously, not give it the GDP, but honestly, it doesn't really matter too much in the end, but really, but. Uh. Nice. More moderate stuff, please. Thank you. Um, Honestly, 90, I'm going to go all the way to 95% and stop. Because it's 100% right now, it looks like. Almost 100%. And this one's 75%. That's really good. That's pretty darn good, not gonna lie. But then again, we, you gotta keep more PP right now. But, for nation or family. As we repair and rebuild the once twisted English education system, a central question continually emerges. What should children and adolescents be taught to love? Should they love their nation that provides them with opportunity and security for more disease? Or should they love their family and the bonds that tie our nation together as a single people? The belief that once nation comes before family appears to be left over from the collaborationist government. And then many are asking exactly to what extent we should embrace a central tenet of Nazism, regardless. It'd be best if this question is addressed sooner rather than, of course, later. Hey, 2.09, not bad. 259 at 
252? Education reform. The education system of England is in dire need of reform. It is wholly unsuitable uh, to prepare our children for the modern world. Scarcely anyone disagrees with us on that. Well, except for those who say our education should be burned down, of course, and a whole new one created if we are to get results. What position do we take here? Let's not throw the baby out of the bathwater. Uh, let's throw away, throwing away the rot, rotting meat and scrap the barrel. I, I don't really care. I mean, I want to go with more... I'll probably go with Power of the Wigs, just because right now... We can close out of this for now. Um, we can... As much as we love conservative power and liberal power... It seems like the liberals, the Whigs need it more. And we get political power, so... 14, 14, 14, that's perfect. The Act Pass is great. English history is written. Every state will get a medium increase in economic output of domestic jobs. Awesome. Love it. Love it, my friends. We love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Now we're going to do another act here. Hey, Italy joins the off end. The free world's just gone bigger. Nice. Uh, the Lords Act. After drawing up plans for the restoration of the House of Lords and determining exactly which lords will be removed and which won't, the time has come to realize these plans. The Lords Act will effectively remove one half of all life peers in the House of Lords, who, those appointed by the collaborationist government after 45. While it will raise a great deal of controversy, these individuals are largely, largely still loyal to the old royal party, and they must be expelled from Parliament. My apologies about this. In order to prevent further problems arising from unchecked appointments of peer life peers, the power to appoint life peers will no longer be granted to the Prime Minister instead. The Prime Minister will select candidates for life peers once a year, who will then have to be approved by a special committee. This committee will be made up of random MPs from both majority and opposition, and will vote on each candidate privately. Should the candidate be approved, they will become a lord. So it's a gift of dilutes the power of the MP a little bit. Teaching our children well. We want our children to have a traditional education. They need... One, where they learn to love their family and be proud of the country. The, issue, the only issue is, what do we prioritize? Uh, we can try to do both, but one must take a precedence over the other. Being respectful of their parents is a good trait, but that might be a bit more effort in. Uh, what? Uh, but it might be a bit more effort in citizenship be better for the youth. Have you seen the kids these days? They need family values. A good civic lesson for any youth. Um, I want more PP for now, so we'll go with this one. That's fine with me. We already have 100% stability, so... I mean, 16, 13, that's fine. Whatever. And then, the National Education Act. We can't do that one yet. So, let's go with the Old Alliance. The U U.S. and England have always had a special, special relationship. We've done our best to maintain peace and democracy in the old and new worlds for the past centuries. And despite our defeats against the Reich nearly 20 years ago, there remains a bond between our two countries. Through two world wars, two, the two greatest English-speaking nations of the world have been tried and tested like no other grand alliance. It's only natural that now, in our hour of need, we should look to the U.S. once more as a partner and a friend. Surely we can restore the old, good old nature and the good old humor of an alliance not yet forgotten. Especially if Italy is joining the OFN. Uh, if we join the OFN, that's pretty good. Especially an Albert Speer leading Germany. That seems like it's uh, a recipe for actually a pretty good, fairly good world, maybe. Maybe. It depends how dang his spear might go or, you know, whatever they might do. So, House of Lords. Ooh, that's not good. Compromise. Let's go with more conservative wing first. Wow, we got two more support. Wow, that sucks. Oh, that's barely enough votes. 253 out of 252. That is barely enough. Actually, when we get Wales and Scotland, it's only going to get more difficult, probably, because they probably don't like us. So, we barely were able to pass that. And I want to get more efficiency, so we can close out of that for now. 14, 14. Great. Great, 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 great. And we'll do that one soon. They, uh, what is this one? Ties of the Pacific Colonies would be very cool. They said we will return. Many Britons are understandably bitter about the withdrawal of American troops during the Second World War. But, however, with this withdrawal came a promise that one day freedom would return to England. Now that it has, we expect the Americans to keep it here. And we'll get this national spirit. They said they will return, which grants more organization. speed, planning speed, I should say. MX planning, so... And I'm just preparing for Wales. Let's be real. Planning for Wales. Cool. Promote liberalism. Well, maybe good, but... Jobs wouldn't be bad, but... Uh, and that's looking really good, too, so... They said they'll return. Elephant airfields. Uh, let's do ties with the Pacific colonies. While Australia and New Zealand officially broke off from the Empire, their ties to the Elephant and our shared history and language keep us close in spirit, if not geographically. We should reach out to these former Commonwealth and current Elephant members to help us rebuild a country and reestablish diplomatic ties with, of course, the rest of the world. Ooh, Night Vision will be very good against those Welsh. Nice. The dastardly Welsh. Cool. And then we'll do the National Education Act, which we should be able to do next. England has thousands of small private schools with vastly different quantities of education from the standards that are set by the public schools. This disparity, along with a substandard public cur school curriculum, has led many young Englishmen and women to be undereducated by nationalizing many sectors of the education system and setting down a much more thorough, mandatory curriculum. We can vastly improve the quality of English schooling. Sounds like a good idea. That stuff is looking good, so we can close out of that for now. High command. Oh, that is efficiency. Yes, please. And reopen that back up. 
And the kingdom here. How is Speer doing? Back to the pass. The act passes. English history is written. Okay, so we get more political... Wait, hold on. That already gave us less political power, but we got more, but a lot more stability, right? Military is good. How's... So we lose 0 0.05 and get 15%. Now we're at 1.32. But now we're at 2.44. This keeps jumping around. The National Education Act. Now it's 1.44. I'm okay with that. 1.44 is pretty good. Resender claims. Oh, I don't want to do this. But as much as it may sting, we are no longer an empire in which the sun never sets. We must think more practically about our position in the world. And that means making small sacrifices for larger gains. The prestige of some small islands in the middle of an ocean is not worth the support of potential allies in the OFN. Renouncing our claims to these islands will present us as a team player in the potential alliance and as a country focused more on democratic ideals than regaining a lost empire. Oh, that sounds so painful to say. Hey, 1.85. We're actually doing really well with that. Alright, so I did say we were going to build some more cities up here, so bing bong boom, boom, boom. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. There you go. We, have, we added five more lines. Nice. Nice. Oh, I don't have any coffee. I drank all the coffee before I started recording because I didn't show you like, well, it's basically the save after the Civil War, but it is what it is. But hey, if you want to check out how we got here, um, I will link in the description below. The first link will be the save for when I started playing as England, basically going towards Harold Wilson's route for England, into you know. So if you want to check that out, please go ahead. Oh, now we're definitely going to. I think we'll have to do the SLP here. Um, that's not enough. We just won't have enough for this. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to boost him up. Well, I'm not going to do this too often, but we'll boost him up this time. So now we have 275, which is fine with us. Totally fine. Just because. Um, we have all this stuff here on the left, which will help boost our support and lower their support too. So, I'm kind of okay with doing that for now. Oh, and England revolt. England has almost recovered from the Civil War. Most cities no longer have bombed out husks of buildings, roads, and public utilities are mostly in working order, and lots of most Englishmen are returning to normal. However, there still remain scars from the war. The scars that will not heal quite so easily. Like the unrepaired bullet holes on many buildings across the country, the nation's manpower is depleted, and it's unprepared and unwilling to fight any conflicts for the foreseeable future. This generation of England has finally tested tasted blood, and like the forefathers, they found it bitter. Followed up with, uh, Taz of Canada. Though all hardships of the past 20 years, through them all, the defeats, the invasion, the end of the war, Canada has stood by free England. In whatever form it has taken, when Tobruk and the Suez Canal were lost, she remained loyal. When Britain itself was invaded, she remained loyal. Through decades of oppression and hardship, she remained loyal. It is time to recognize the contributions of Canada to our victory, and to give our humble thanks to our most steadfast supporter in whatever way we can. So this is looking really good. And high command, how are we at it? Uh, this is at 95%. Great, this is at 85%. Not bad. Yes. And now they're at 90%, or at least will be very, very soon. Very good, about a few more days left, and then we'll go ahead and do that one. And the royal visit. Oh boy, I love royal visits. And again, I'm not, I'm not royal myself, and because I'm a American. American. Yeah. And GDP and death's not too bad. Taz of Canada. And. Ooh. Royal visit, why not? As part of our Thanksgiving, the Queen shall return to Canada, her second home, to pay homage to the support they've given us. Other members of the royal family shall accompany her throughout the country and celebrate the return of freedom to England in the dawn of a new future few would have dreamed possible just ten years ago in the Act Passes. English history is written. Ah, subsidized higher education, more costs, unfortunately, but we get better academic base, research facilities, poverty, academic base rapidly improves, more stability, more daily political power. Overall, I think that's definitely worth it. That's definitely worth it. 2.4 billion? Could be a lot worse. Still building, and we ran out of things to build around here. Which kind of sucks, but whatever. And, and we'll do the OFM bases. Our army's not in any state to fight off a counterattack by the Germans, should it come to that. We need more men, more equipment, and more time to reorganize our troops. The OFM can provide all three, if we give them the rights to station bases at strategic locations in England. While it's technically violates their sovereignty, everything has a cost, and a few well-armed yanks on English soil is worth never having to endure such calamities as we have. Not a bad idea. And OFN airfields. While our own RAF continues to grow, we will require assistance from our allies to ensure that the skies over England are friendly for the time being. Allowing OFN nations, including the U.S., to base advanced fighters and bombers here will buy us time to develop our own forces and ensure that we can ward off any attempts by the Germans to violate our airspace. You never know what Papa Alba Speer is going to do. Not bad. And get some guts from that, too. Ooh, the royal visit. The cannons boom. The cameras snap. The crowd cheered on at the... Ottawa Tarmac as the royal family descended from the aircraft. As they got to the bottom of the stairs, they were greeted by the Prime Minister of Canada and the Governor General, along with various other notables. As they walked towards the car, the PM asked the Queen, How are you feeling, Your Majesty? Excited to be quite honest, said the Queen. It's peculiar. When I was in exile here, I found myself eager to get back to London by any method possible, and I was overjoyed when everything went 
how we hoped. But after a few months in London, I began to wish to see Canada once again. Philip agreed. Regardless, a royal visit by the Queen of England is quite an honor for us in Canada. I suppose it is, though I do say, you must expect these royal visits to be far more regular from now on. The airplane has really lowered the barrier of travel time and expense for trips like these. And as you may always feel free to visit the same nation that hosted you for so many years, Your Majesty. Who says you can't go home again? But if you enjoyed today's first episode of playing as Mr. Not Showing Up, George Jellico. Please do consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow, as we'll see in which we might have some more elections. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.